Hello, my name is Mike Smell, and welcome to another episode of Simulation in Action. In today's episode, my colleague Parker Wright will discuss using Simulation CFD as part of the factory design process. Hi, I'm Parker Wright, and for this segment I'll be talking about Autodesk Simulation CFD for Factory Design Suite. So start with some background. What is CFD? What's the modeling of air and fluid flow as it interacts with surrounding solids? CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. In this case, fluid could represent liquid or gas. So for a factory design suite, of course, it would be air within a factory or around and outside a factory or contaminants. Dynamics is movement, completes the acronym. And of course, most CFD tools these days also model the effects of temperature or thermal influences. So now CFD really means flow and thermal simulation. So what is the business value behind FDS and CFD? Well, it allows our clients to meet EPA and OSHA requirements, prevent shutdowns, fines, and loss of on time. It also allows them to <clears throat> look at controlled and fugitive emissions. So controlled emissions would be outside of the plant leaving from the stack. Fugitive would be inside the plant leaving from equipment. Our clients study temperatures to ensure the thermal comfort and safety of their workers, and they'll also use CFD to reduce their ventilation requirements and thus reduce energy costs and energy consumption. So how does simulation CFD fit into the process? Well, it all, st all starts with a CAD or BIM model. So you start with your FDS model, you pull that into simulation CFD, and then you can run ventilation system design studies. You can look at fugitive or controlled emissions, thermal stratification, design day studies, thermal comfort, contaminant migration, stack reentrainment between buildings, smoke visibility in the event of a fire or pollution within the factory, stack effect, natural ventilation and wind loading on the exterior, and then share these results with the facilities team, your internal engineering design team, or the client or owner. So let's look at uh, simulation CFD plus FDS in action. So this is a really nice overview video showing how this works. This is a model of a factory in Inventor. We can see that the machines are in red and the ventilation system is in gray. So we leverage the CAD connection between Inventor and simulation CFD to pull an exact, exact representation, parametric representation of this geometry into simulation CFD. So you're able to reuse the native data directly out of Inventor. Now we're reading it into simulation CFD. We'll do a few things to clean up a couple edges and surfaces here and there. That happens automatically. And now we start assigning materials. So we've selected the ducts and we're going to assign those as aluminum or steel, whatever the material may be. We can also set up rules to automate this process next time. We have a full database of materials right at your fingertips and you can even set favorites and preferences within that. So all the ducts are now metal. Now we'll pull up some rules that we've predefined that will automatically assign materials to a large majority of the components. We'll go ahead and apply those rules and we can see that now our factory is completely set up. Floor, ceiling, walls, equipment, people, electronic enclosures, ducts, and of course, just as important, the airspace. The next step is applying what we call boundary conditions. So these are loads or engineering quantities that we know. You can see all of the arrows pointing down out of our ductwork. In this case, we know the amount of air that's flowing out of each duct. So we're going to assign that and then study how the air moves through the space. So now here's a completed simulation. The colors indicate thermal profile. So anywhere that's red is warm, Anywhere that's dark blue is cold. And what we see here immediately is that the machines are in an area that is not well ventilated enough. And we have a corner of the factory with no machines and no thermal loads that is overventilated. That's where it's very dark. We just saw some ISO surfaces sweep through the model. So that's a quick way to show a cloud of air or solid that's at a certain temperature. So we can use those to diagnose and find the hot spots and understand why they are that way. We can also use ISO surfaces to look at air velocities to make sure that we're within specified limits. And we can use them to track pollutants or contaminants to ensure that we have any off-gassing um, or any pollution levels within the factory, it's pulled out immediately. Now we're using 2D slices or cut planes to swipe through the model. We're slicing and dicing. We can see immediately the velocity profiles and the temperature profiles all along this 2D slice as we just very intuitively drag it through the model. We can zoom in on a certain area. Now we'll drag this 2D slicer cut plane down below the diffusers that supply the air to the space. 
Then we can see those dark blue spots. That's cold air coming out of the diffusers. And then we can see the warm air directly around the machine. So we can also understand from a safety perspective how close the employees or workers can get to the machines. So as I said, we've identified an area here on the, on the left corner that's overventilated. We've seen some qualitative data. Let's dig in now with some quantitative data and get some real results out of this. So we can actually drop in a plot, a 2D XY graph that shows us the temperature distribution and deviation throughout, say, one of the aisles. So this is where employees are moving most often. So we dropped in that plot to understand exactly what the temperature is and get some real data out. Now we go back and we make some changes to the ventilation system. So we've actually run four factories in their entirety. We've queued these up and run these overnight. We come back in the morning and the results are ready to be understood. So we can see that we've sho we're showing areas that are too hot or too cold and we can see that the volumetric aspect of those has been reduced. So instantly looking at these four factories gives us a clue as to how the ventilation system should be set up, where we might turn registers on, where we might turn them off, and now we're starting to get into the energy saving aspect of it. So we guarantee safety first, of course. We know that we're ventilating it properly in the areas. We know if there are areas with pollutants, we want to capture those. We want to use hoods to grab those and pull those out. Once we've dialed that in, we can then dial back the energy consumption by dialing back the ventilation requirements to reduce the amount of running costs that we have day over day and year over year. So now again, we're looking at the four comparisons. We've converged on the optimal design. We can prove that out by using the exact same graph that we set up before. And now we see four plot lines all through the aisles, the same aisle of our virtual factory. And we get that instant design comparison. It's very visual. It's great for sharing with management and great for sharing with clients, differentiating yourself and the service that you offer or differentiating why your factory is green or LEED certified. And then lastly, we'll pull these results into showcase and we can actually show people moving around throughout the space. We can show the airflow profiles within the space in the context of a real life rendered animated model with CFD results overlaid. There's no more impactful way to share results with your stakeholders. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope this has piqued your interest. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly at parker.wright at autodesk.com. Thanks for your time.